Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com and today let's paint a tire. This is part two of our little mini series and today we are going to finish where we left off. So when I'm painting something that's sort of complicated at a surface level, it often works this way. I paint it first as a basic form and then I add the surface detail. So for this tread pattern, we actually have one advantage, which is it is a repeat pattern. So if I can make a single repeat unit, I can then just sort of clone that over and over and then warp it around the shape. So the first trick for me is looking at my reference and sketching out the repeat unit as a 2D pattern. Not doing it in perspective, I'm just drawing it flat on the paper, making sure that it mirrors correctly and making sure that it'll repeat correctly. And then when I know I have something that's gonna repeat correctly, I'll make a couple different copies, lower the transparency, and then trace it with the pen tool to make a clean vector shape. Once I have half the pattern, I can duplicate this over, make the entire repeat, and then sort of trim the edges down. But what I'm really looking for in this process is not the positive shape. I actually want the negative space between the treads. Because if you look at where I have right now, I've actually already rendered what will be the bumps. What I need are the dark lines between the bumps. So I'm going to take the pattern I just made, and I'm going to make essentially the inverse of it. And there's a couple different ways to get here, but you'll end up with a little cutout stencil of the space between the treads. Okay, great. So now we have the space between the treads, but it's very flat. It doesn't match the perspective of the drawing, and it certainly doesn't match the circular shape of the tire. So what we need to do is take this, and using the warp command, we need to make it into more of sort of a cylindrical deformation. So we'll use the warp command, we'll use a preset called arch, but I happen to know that this only works vertically, so I actually have to rotate my whole image sideways first, then do the warp command, and then I can rotate it back into position later. And then once I've gotten sort of the primary deformation down, I need to do the fine tweaking. So I put it over top of my base form, and then I do the warp lattice one more time, and this is just to make sure it really matches up with my image. Now I'm gonna speed up the footage a little bit here because this is one of those things that just takes some tweaking. You're gonna get better at this the more you practice it, but it takes a little while. But eventually you get it into position, you're happy with it, so you'll confirm that and erase away where you've gone outside of the lines. But now we're back to the idea of shape and then form. Awesome. So we can lock the transparent pixels of this single layer that represents the space between the tire treads, and now I can just paint on top of it without messing up our previous rendering. You'll notice it started as a total flat color, and that's not what we want. But now that we can paint inside the lines, we can make certain areas lighter, certain areas darker, and we don't have to worry about painting carefully. Once again, this is that nice balance between precision and loose gestural strokes. So at this point, all that's left is just hand painting in a few extra little details. And this is really going to be down to either your own design or the reference that you're studying. But it's pretty simple. The reference I was looking at had some little raised rings. So that's as easy as making an elliptical selection, stroking that selection with edit stroke, and then just making a few copies. And of course, once again, if I want to, I can lock transparent pixels and then sort of modify the color on these after the fact. But I'm not going to dwell on the fussy little details I do at the end of this process. I'll leave that up to you. The important thing is that we worked in sort of a simple to complicated process. And if, if you want to paint this way, you're going to need to understand the various techniques that got us here. There was starting with the basic rendered form. There was identifying a repeat pattern inside of our reference and then setting up our own version of that repeat as a 2D flat element. Then once we had our repeat finished, we had to know how to use the warp command to deform it around the cylinder. And then just like in some of the previous videos, we took that shape, locked the transparent pixels, and then didn't have to worry about painting outside of the lines. So if any or all of these techniques are new to you, make sure to look at the links in the bottom of the post and learn about how they work. So next time you look at a tire, don't think that's too complicated for me because you know how to tackle it. Have fun painting, guys.